Hello summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I am Crumbs and today we're going to be going over the best supports for every elo. The champs in league are not always a one size fits all. Different picks get wildly different results depending on the skill bracket you're in. For example, let's talk about everyone's favorite most balanced champion, Yumi. Objectively speaking, with perfect play, Yumi is one of the most broken champions in league. At Worlds, she was the champion with the second highest presence, showing up in 95% of drafts. The only champion that was higher was Aatrox with a perfect 100%. But the thing is, when Aatrox did get through, he only won 55% of the time. That's pretty good, but it doesn't compare to Yumi's 100% win rate. But then, look at her solo queue stats. She has a relatively high presence rate with her pick and ban rates being about 10 and 26% across all elos. But people really struggle to play both as and with Yumi. Her win rate is about 47%. Even in higher ranks where she does better, she isn't really a good pick. In Diamond, it's 49%. And even in Masters Plus, where gameplay is as good as it gets in solo queue, she's just barely under 50. Another example of this is Thresh. Considering he was the strongest support in the game earlier this season, Thresh isn't in a great spot right now. But at least in Diamond Plus, he has a positive win rate, just about 51%. But in the lower ranks, he's basically a troll pick, with one of the lowest win rates of any traditional support. On the other side of the coin, in lower ranks, mage supports tend to do super well. In Silver, 5 of the 7 highest win rate supports fall under that class of champion. But as you go up the ladder, more supporty supports take those top spots. So, what's the reason for this disparity across the different ranks? How can the champion just be bad in certain ranks? Well, it boils down to two very broad reasons. The first should be pretty obvious. Some champions are just too mechanically difficult for players in a certain rank to pull off. Referencing our examples above, Thresh has a very overloaded kit. It takes a lot of mechanical skill to actually use him to his full potential. His ceiling is so high that Riot had to nerf him again and again and again to push him out of the top tier of support. As a result, he's in a spot where if you play him perfectly, he's good, but not great. And if you're playing him mediocrely, he's just plain bad. Hence, he really only works in Diamond, and even then, he's generally outclassed by over a dozen other champions in most situations. The second and less thought about reason is that some champions need a team to play around them heavily. This is where Yumi comes into play. When you lock in Yumi, you need an AD carry that can safely lane in what is essentially a 1v2 lane. Most AD carries aren't good enough to do this, and tilt when they get poked out of lane or die because they can't avoid skill shots. If you have a super fed teammate to attach to later on, it's salvageable, but many games are over by this point because the enemy bot lane is just way too ahead and your AD carry ends up being useless. Okay, so now that we discussed what makes a champion bad, what makes for a good one? Well, in line with everything we said before, the mechanical skill requirements of the champion has to match the elo the player is in. At the very least, the skill floor should be able to be met by the vast majority of players in that elo. If you can't even consistently put out the minimum of what a champion has to offer, you really shouldn't be playing that champion. Skill ceiling is also something to take into account, though it's not necessarily mandatory to play all champions perfectly. Like I said before, someone like Thresh, who is so heavily balanced around high-end play, does need to be played super well to even get just better than okay results. But an enchanter like Sona can be played at just an okay level and still have a huge impact on games. Basically, not dying and spamming spells in fights is enough to do more than most other supports in 5v5 teamfights. The second thing that makes certain champions good in certain elos is a big factor that a lot of people don't realize. Everyone knows that League has a general meta to it, depending to the overall state of the game. If enchanters are OP, then hyper carries are probably OP as well. If those bot laners are weak, then assassins tend to be weak, and tanks tend to be strong, since they can frontline for those hyper carries. But a less thought about concept is that different skill levels also have their own unique meta. Remember how earlier we said that mages are overall the most successful class on support for lower ranks? Because teams typically are less coordinated in those ranks, you're not going to see clean front-to-back teamfights where supports and frontliners peel for backline carries as much. Most fights are simply determined by who has the most raw damage, and since mage supports are always going to win out there, they get the best results. 
Before we get to the main course for today, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and other content are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about climbing, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24 seven. So it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your pro guides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now let's get on to our picks for the best supports in each elo. We'll be going from lowest to highest. So our first pick is for iron. Like we talked about before, the lower you go, the stronger supports that just deal a lot of damage are. So here, the best support you can play is Bren. His ability to bully lane and put out huge teamfight damage is pretty hard to beat. Remember how we talked about the meta varying based on the skill levels of players at different ranks? Well, obviously iron players are gonna have the lowest awareness in fights, so it's really common to see them just stack up in fights regardless of what they're playing against. As a result, you're going to see a lot of games where Brand's passive sets off chain reactions as the opposing champions make no effort whatsoever to spread out. Next up, for Bronze, the support that gets the best results is Amumu. There are a lot of kill lane supports out there, but most of them sort of fall off as the game goes on. At best, they make single target picks later, but that just doesn't compare to the utility of an enchanter or the damage of a mage when playing in low elo, since most games are just constant 5v5 teamfighting. But with Amumu's ultimate, he doesn't fall off at all. In fact, when it comes to 5v5 deathballing, he's easily the best support for setting your team up for a win. So with him, you're able to play aggressively in lane, snowball your AD carry, and still be your own late game insurance. Taking things up to silver, our next pick is Sona. This may be a bit surprising. Earlier, we talked about how mages were generally better in low elo and how in silver specifically, five of the top seven spots were champions in that class. But the actual number one spot is pretty much the farthest thing from being a carry. Sona is the definition of a team play champion. And while we generally say you want to play something that gives you a little bit more of solo agency, there's no arguing with how consistently well she performs across all ranks. You basically give up having any pressure during the laning phase, but unlike Yumi, Sona at least brings a lot of sustain to help survive it. This makes it easy to reach the point of the game that you group up and by then you outscale almost everyone else in the game. For gold, the pick we have to go with is Zyra. She's basically the total opposite of Sona. Where Sona gives up the early game to be a huge utility bot later, Zyra is an absolute monster of a laning phase champion. She's a massive bully and can often poke out the enemy bot lane 1v2. Unlike a lot of other OP early champions, she does not fall off at all as the game goes on. In fact, she just gets better. Her constant poke and huge wombo combo potential lets you hard carry, and oftentimes, you'll top the damage charts. Honestly, Zyra isn't even a support, she's just a carry that doesn't farm. Either way, it's a really reliable way to get yourself some LP. Now for Plat, the pick we have is Taric. It used to be the case that Taric was a champion that only really put up good numbers at the highest level of solo queue. But after the durability patch, he shot way up to being one of the best performing champions in the game. Even in the lower ranks, he's pretty good. But in the middle elos, the only champion that comes close to his patch to patch consistency is Janet. He's surprisingly flexible. His kit inherently pairs well with super aggressive AD carries, since champions like Samira and Tristana can just jump into fights and serve as a beacon for your stun, but he also goes well with hyper carries, since you can peel and protect them from divers later on in teamfights. Our pick for the best support in Diamond is Blitzcrank. His little tune-up a few patches ago made Blitz absolutely broken. He's gotten some well-deserved nerfs since then, but even after all of that, he's still a ridiculously strong pick. The thing is, there's no real counter to him. If you have a winning lane, go for a hook. If you land it, you kill and your AD carry starts to snowball. If you have a bad lane, you can always go for roams. But where he really shines is outside of the laning phase. A single good hook can be enough to secure an objective or at the right time, even be the play you need to win the game. Due to a lack of sample size, it can be hard to look at what the best picks are for Challenger and even Grandmaster. So instead of looking at all three of the top ranks separately, we'll be lumping them all together in a category that we'll call Masters Plus. And the pick we're gonna go for here is Janna. 
This spot definitely could have gone to Maokai, since he actually does have a higher win rate than Janna, but there's a bit of context needed for that. The thing is, Janna fits into absolutely any team composition, no matter what. Even an aggressive AD carry like Draven or Tristana can do well with Janna, whereas Maokai is pretty heavily reliant on having an AD carry that can go in, since he doesn't pair super well with hyper carries. It's not just synergies to take into account either. Maokai has plenty of matchups that are tough to lane against, while Janna is good into virtually everyone. Janna's often thought of as one of the most elo inflating champions in the game, and to some degree, that's true. Her skill floor is definitely low. That said, she actually has a decently high skill ceiling. There's a super noticeable difference between the average Janna that just wants to coast to a win, and the great Janna that wants to contribute to the win as much as possible. The best Janna players are proactive early, using her high movement speed to help out the jungler and mid laner when it's optimal. They also have the awareness and mechanics to actually make plays in fights, positioning to use her Q and ultimate to disrupt enemy dashes and jumps. This makes a big difference compared to the Janna that just sits behind the AD carry, acting as a shield bot while lazily CCing after the divers are already onto the backline. And that about wraps things up for our best support in every elo. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Now that we've reached the end, comment your rank and what you main down in the comments section below. Maybe it's time for you to reconsider what you're putting all your time into. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next one, but until then, good luck on the rift, and may the LP God smile down upon you. <laughs>